All right, I was about to start recording, but as some of you might know, because you've watched the videos, I've struggled with my lighting over the years. These are some really cheap Amazon lights, but they've done the job, but I just made a new purchase. James, show them what I got. Uh, new lights, I think. Newer. They're definitely newer to me. <laughs> newer lights. So we're gonna set these up and see if it makes a difference. Think it's gonna make a difference? Yeah. Do, does it have a remote? It has a remote. I don't know if I can use it. I heard something like, you had to have the batteries to use it, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Let's set them up. All right, so here's our new lights. Let's see what they look like. Whoa. It's just a big, this is why I need it, because we have such a small home studio. It's thin. These are so thin. Yes. It, it looks like a giant mirror. Which one's thinner? Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot smaller. It's a lot smaller. Hopefully it's better. And this is gonna be my hair. This is gonna be my hair light. And you have like a light shining down behind you to add depth. Little cutie, little <laughs> cute light. It's so tiny for like a light like that. I know. Can't wait to plug it up. I'm taking pictures of petals or something. How's your cinematography doing? Is it good? Yeah, you holding it still? Another way to do it, remember what Peter McKinnon said was hold it against your chest like this or just lock it in. All right, here we go. It doesn't even look like it's on. Oh, there we go. That's 1%. Whoa. We need to get to a lot brighter. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's only 38. This is halfway right here. So that is going to be plenty bright because that's only halfway. Let's just halfway. go up all the way. Oh, man. I have to use my filter. There it is. That's and that's the little light. Plug this one in. Okay, that's 1%. Yeah, you stand there. Okay, so we got new lights. How does it look? I haven't really had a lot of time to dial them in, but that's what we got. Also, how does it sound? I'm using my mic up here because I got new lights and now my mic is dead. I don't know, I plugged it in. It's not turning on. I don't know. Anyways, we got a video to record. So today is a follow-up video to my other video called Are Amps Dead? And a lot of you watch that video. There's a lot of opinions. A lot of you tend to agree with me that at least, at least in the worship world, amps seem to be less and less needed. So if you haven't seen that video, go watch that video because in it, I gave you a lot of details about the new Westminster Effects Geneva version two, which is an AC30 amp sim. Let me get it. I had to keep things in the box so it doesn't get dusty. But here it is, the Westminster Effects Geneva AC30 amp sim. In that other video, I showed you all the little details of what all these knobs do, different sounds you can make, a bunch of sound samples. I probably played too much in that video, but I'm not gonna redo all that today. Go check out that video. But today we have a specific goal. I'm gonna put this head to head with the AC30 amp sim in VHX Stomp. I'm going to dial them in as similarly as possible, and then I'm also gonna see how they take pedals. And let me say, they both take pedals differently. But first, I have two things I wanna tell you. All right, so I'm gonna ask you to do something no YouTuber has ever done, and that is to make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. Now, the reason is, is because Friday, there's a video coming out Friday, and I don't want you to miss it. I'm gonna be showing you how you can use snapshots in the HX Stomp in a new way. It's something I started doing and I love it. And so you're not gonna wanna miss that video. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure all the notifications are set so you don't miss out. The second thing I wanna tell you about is I briefly mentioned at the end of the other video that I'm gonna be giving this away. When Cody Fields sent this to me, he said you can give it away. And so that's what we're gonna do. There's a giveaway live right now. Go click the link in the description. I mean, after you watch this video, of course. But I just love doing giveaways. I love giving back to you guys. It's one way that I can show appreciation for all the support that all of you have given me. I'm doing the giveaway through King Sumo again, which is the website I've been using. Just click the link in the description in your email and then you're entered to win. But if you want to increase your chances of winning, you can also do some like bonus entries. So make sure you read and do all those as well. Now let me hook all this up and see how well these amps compare. So much stuff to hook up always i got this new cable that is what the printer usb comes out of the back of the stomp into what thunderbolt so i can take it into my new computer knock on wood i have not broken the usb port on the back of my stomp yet but i hear that's a rampant problem so i'm going to be running this through the effects loop of the stomp which means i have to take out my jet mcx and put this in the effects loop let's do it
There we go, we're all hooked up. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is you see I have a preset here. I have a looper here so I can loop some of the same strum patterns into these different amps. What I have here on foot switch one, I have it toggling between the SX830, which is the AC30 model in the HX Stomp, and then my effects loop, which is the Geneva Amp Sim. And so as I push this, it'll toggle between those two amps. They're both being fed into a 1x12 silver bell. I think this is just brought in just like it is stock. And then after this, I'm gonna run it into an IR and see how much that changes it. So this is um, what we have right now. As far as the Vox sound, this is not straight out of the HX sound, but I tweaked it a little bit. Let's see what we got. <laughs> So my goal is today is to dial in a couple sounds and try to get them to match each other and see how well we can do that. They have some different characteristics for sure. But then when I start running like an overdrive into it to see how it takes those different effects, that's I think when we're gonna see the difference. But right now is a good clean tone. I'm on the bridge pickup using a humbucker here. Bass contour knob is rolled all the way off. I'm gonna keep it there for now. This is what the Geneva sounds like. I don't have a top-down camera angle on this right now. Oh, maybe I can just set it up. Can you see that? Oh, will that be good enough to see what I do? Hmm, maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Also, I noticed that sometimes when I'm playing guitar, my guitar is always right out of the screen, so I'm trying to fit all this in the screen. <laughs> Maybe you just don't need to see my face. I'll just bend down like this. How about that? Can you see the uh, the pedal? There it is. Anyways, pedal. I got my top boost there, treble. You can see it, there it is. So, if you're using headphones, I can tell there's a little bit of bass. There's more bass in um, the HX Stomp. So let's add a little more bass. Also, I'll say I noticed that the bass is where these two pedals tend to be different. Um, the bass seems to be a little more clear on the HX Stomp, but as we add drives, I think we'll see that it kind of flubs out. I will say I don't have any special EQ other than what's on the cab here. Uh, the global EQ is off right now. so. I just brought in this stock cabinet, and that's what we have. So let's just see if we can get that bass to match the HX Stomp a little better. They sound very similar, it's just a little bit of difference there. So I'm gonna put this back up because I don't want that bass all the way up. Now let's add a little drive to this. Let's just bump the drive up to like 6.3. Let's just do seven. Let's see where we're at. Okay, that's a lot. Let's just go, let's go up a little bit. Let's go up to five. That was way more than I thought it was gonna be. So I'll go ahead and just talk about it. The digital harshness that some people talk about, I've never really noticed that bad until I did, did this comparison. And I will say, I notice it more on the AC30 amp model. I, I drug in a, a Fawn, AC Fawn, and I didn't notice that fizz, that digital harshness fizz, but I'm definitely hearing it even right now. So let me know if you can hear it down in the comments. So when I really dig in, though, that top, the top end, there's a little bit of fizziness that kind of goes away when I switch to this. So here is the stomp. Now 
Now, I will say I take into account when I'm making my presets, like um, when I do uh, presets for my expanse pack, when I boost up the drive on the amps, I also do a lot of different things to the settings to try to take away some of that stuff that I don't like. And as you click through the snapshots, it moves a lot of things, not just something like drive. Um, and so, yeah, so just know that going into it. I think there, all that to say, I think there are ways to make make the HX something sound good, but in this demo test, I'm just gonna say, I think I think this wins for that very reason. I think the clean tones, they're very similar, but when we start jacking up the gain, which let's go ahead and go back up to 7.5. <laughs> Already way more treble over here, so I'll start adding in. I'll bring in all the top boost and all the treble. Stomp. I mean, even as I let a chord ring out from the Geneva and I switch over to the stomp, you can hear that fizz being introduced right into the signal. So, Geneva. So I would want to like, which I already have the presence all the way down, I would want to take the, the cut all the way up. That's the thing is when you start messing with the cut and the treble, it, it starts to take some of that away, but then it also makes it sound uh, more like it's in a box. And so I try to, I'm sure there's some more playing around we can do. If I take the cut away, um, Geneva. Much more crisp, much more in your face. So um, let's just keep taking the treble away. That's not what we want. So I do feel like this is just much more amp-like. Yeah, what do you think? All right, let's just crank it. Let's get it all the way up, all the drive we got on both. I'm gonna take this treble back up where we had it, bring the cut up, because I know we're gonna need it. I'm gonna crank this drive. So this is the stomp. <laughs> I'm sure they're the same volume. <laughs> Also, I don't know if I'm gonna put it on the screen, but you, you can see the, the screen up here, if I didn't say that, when the um, effects loop is lit, like it just went off, that means we are on the stomp. This means we are on the Geneva. I think I said that earlier, but just make sure you didn't skip that part. So we are now on the Geneva. So now I want to do that same quick test through one of um, David Hislop's IRs. This is the Greenback 25. Oh, I can't remember. What is it? Yeah, there it is. Boom. You can read it yourself. Um, and yeah, we'll do that quick A-B test same way. This is that amp. Already, I think the hiss improves. There's still a little bit in there, but I think that's definitely a plus for the IR. Just seems a lot warmer. But you still get that hiss when you dig into it. And we'll just 
crank the gain again on both these. Geneva first this time. Yeah, so let's clean them back up. Let's see where we're at. And then we'll start adding overdrive and we'll see how they take overdrive. Actually, we could loop something. This is the looper, right? Oh yeah. Let's loop something. Stomp. All right, so I bought an overdrive here. I'll be playing that and I'll just start increasing the gain on one and then the other and you can see how it affects it. So this is the Timmy um, set up just like this. So let's bring in our volume again. HX stomp. What do you think? That's pretty um, telling right there. That's that's pretty extreme. Really sounds nasty when it goes back to the HX stomp. I never noticed it that bad before, but in this comparison, that's, that's pretty bad. All right, now let me go down to another preset. I did a Fawn preset right here, and I didn't notice as much of an extreme. So let's... Um So let's do that same test. Let me record something. I'll try to record something a little more open. Right, let's turn on our overdrive. So you can hear a huge difference. So our gain is all the way up. We are on the Geneva.
Let's do a different drive. Because why not? Distortion Minotaur. So this is the fawn. <laughs> So yeah, I don't think there's much more I can do. That's the A-B test. Let's um, let's go back to the AC model and do some delay and reverb. So what'd you think? Now you've heard it, you've heard back to back, the Stomp versus the Geneva, the AC models. What did you think? Let me know down in the comments. I think this is the clear winner in that, on the clean sounds, they tend to be about the same, I think. Um, but when you start adding any amount of gain or pushing them at all, this just steps way ahead. It doesn't fall apart like the Stomp does, at least in the AC model. Uh, I didn't notice it as much in the Fawn as we saw, and I, I just, I don't really notice it that much in the other amp models either. I don't play through the AC30 that often. Um, do I even have an AC30? I don't even have an AC30 in my Expanse pack. So it's not one that I'm really used to, but comparing the two, this is definitely the winner. So if you wanna get your hands on this, make sure you follow the instructions for the giveaway. Um, I'm gonna be interviewing Cody Fields next week uh, before the giveaway ends so we can hear a little bit about how this came together and some of his other things he's got going on. So make sure you subscribe, you don't wanna miss that. Also, like I said, I got a video this Friday coming out showing you a different way to use snapshots, so stick around for that. And is there anything else I need to tell you? Thank you for being here. I'll see you in the next video, bye.